it's just been announced that people in Iceland have started to mourn the loss of a 700-year-old glacier. The once impressive glacier has now turned into a shriveled up patch, and can be found at the top of a volcano. Hundreds of people could be seen climbing the volcano in honour of the event. What's sad about this though is that the glacier is Iceland's first glacier to disappear. It's been said that going back 10 years ago it was over 6 square miles. Some of the locals have said the following. We are now starting to see the effects of climate change. It's happening right in front of our eyes and something needs to be done. This glacier is the first but it won't be the last. We need to change our ways in order to preserve our natural world. Scientists have agreed with these people, saying that if drastic changes aren't made, within 200 years all of the world's glaciers will melt. Although some are taking this as a joke, officials are not seeing the funny side. Further saying that in order for us to live on this planet for thousands of years to come, we all need to do our bit. A plaque was installed close to the region and it carries the following message. This monument is to acknowledge that we know what is happening and what needs to be done. Only you know if we did it. The meaning is deep and hopefully we can turn things around. Another person said the following about the event. Some don't believe in global warming which is fine. However, whatever you believe, one thing that is fact is that ice around the world is melting. And we need to try and stop that as soon as we can before it's too late. Scientists have recently come forward with some more worrying news. They have said that as the Earth's temperature is rising, we could be subjected to something stored in the ice. For many years now researchers have talked about ancient diseases being stored in ice caps around the world. What's happening is that now their melting will start to come into contact with these ancient pathogens. This isn't an issue for things we're aware of, and things we can cure but we potentially wouldn't know anything about this ancient disease. The World Health Organization said the following. It represents the knowledge that a serious international epidemic could be caused by a pathogen currently unknown. So regardless of people's views, it's in our best interest to ensure these glaciers don't melt across the world. While scanning the cosmos, NASA researchers have been able to find some incredible celestial objects. One of these goes by the name of Bennu. It was announced on the 3rd of December 2018 that a NASA probe had completed its 1.2 billion mile or 2 billion kilometer journey to arrive at the asteroid Bennu. Researchers have now said the probe will begin a survey of the asteroid. The spacecraft will start flyovers of the asteroids north and south. The probe will get close to the asteroid as well. It's been announced it will fly around 4 miles above Bennu during each flyover. This asteroid isn't just a piece of rock floating in space. It's one of our solar system's most ancient relics. It's been floating in space for more than 4.5 billion years. Scientists have said this rocky body formed within 10 million years of our solar system's formation. Scientists have said that Bennu likely broke off from a much larger carbon-rich asteroid around 700 million to 2 billion years ago. Its original formation was likely in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. NASA researchers though have just said they've discovered something they didn't expect to. It turns out scientists were expecting Bennu to be made up of sand, but instead it's made up of rocks. The lander was programmed to pick up the sand-like substance, but it's now caused a slight problem for the lander. The lander in question is around 20 feet in length and has the ability to travel over 19,000 miles an hour. With that being said though, this recent discovery doesn't mean the mission is over. Lead researchers have said the lander will be able to cope with the terrain. One of the scientists said the following. The extraordinary in-flight performance to date demonstrates that we'll be able to meet the challenge that the rock surface of Bennu presents. The extraordinary performance encompasses not only the spacecraft and instruments, but also the team that continues to meet every challenge that Bennu throws at us. On the 18th of June 2019, NASA said the lander managed to get even closer and capture a photograph of the asteroid at only 0.4 miles away. NASA have also announced this asteroid could one day make contact with our planet. 
The Space Rock, which is 492 meters or 1,614 feet, has a 1 in 2,700 chance of impacting Earth. They said that Bennu will pass Earth at around 750,000 kilometers or 460,000 miles on the 23rd of September 2060. It's also been said that Bennu could potentially be mined for water in the future. Scientists have said that while conducting tests on the Alps, they made a worrying discovery. This new research says that scattered all across the Alps are microplastics. One of the researchers said the following about the discovery. It's apparent the majority of microplastics in snow comes from the air. The study was published in the journal Science Advances. This was after tests were conducted on snow samples from the Swiss Alps and the Arctic. Scientists have said that what's worrying is that these microplastics were found in high concentrations. Not only that, but they were found all over the region. Researchers have now said it's very likely plastic can be found in every location on Earth. Other microplastics have been found in places such as the Amazon and deserts of our planet. Doctors from India recently said that plastic pollution is affecting the locals, with one doctor saying that they're treating young children and most of these are being treated for abdominal sickness, and this comes from the contaminated environment. This pollution has started to negatively impact the natural environment and creates problems for plants, wildlife and even humans. Recently, scientists were exploring the Mariana Trench and so far they've been able to reach a depth of 10,928 meters. What's incredible about this is they've passed the previous record of 10,916 meters. So one of the first things that people are asking is what did they find when they was down there? One climate activist said the following, Rubbish was found lying at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, and although this sounds a bit anticlimactic, it also shows us how we're affecting every part of our planet. Even the lowest points where you'd expect not to find this kind of stuff. Every year it's estimated that over 12 million tons of plastic ends up in our oceans, and most of this is picked up by currents and distributed across the entire planet. This doesn't just look ugly, but it affects everything that lives in our oceans. Every marine creature suffers due to how plastic is in the water, it's a sad truth that needs to change in order to preserve our beautiful planet. The discovery made many people sad and put into perspective that we need to change the way we dispose of our used products. For now, the team is still studying the area and hoping to learn more about how life lives at these depths. The light sailcraft is making the rounds on news websites recently for the incredible images it's sending back. This project is a crowd-funded solar cell project from the Planetary Society. The mission first launched on the 25th of June 2019, and this craft is special because it's the first spacecraft in Earth's orbit propelled by sunlight. Not only has this project so far been a massive success, but it showed researchers that a controlled solar sail could be better than rocket engines. The organization is based in the United States, and have managed to capture the attention of millions already. The Planetary Society said the following on their website. LightSail 2 captured this image of its deployed solar sail, and Earth on the 31st of July 2019 as the spacecraft was passing over the Pacific Ocean. The image has been oriented to place north up. The Pacific Ocean and Baja California are visible in the background. LightSail 2's dual 185-degree fisheye camera lenses can capture more than half of the sail. This image has been de-distorted and color-corrected, further saying that during the first 10 days following sail deployment, the spacecraft was in solar sailing mode about two-thirds of the time. On the 3rd of August, the mission team uploaded a software patch that automatically switches the spacecraft to detumble mode when it's in Earth shadow. Over the past couple of days, this update has allowed LightSail 2 to constantly stay in solar sailing mode during the sunlit portion of each orbit. Bruce Betts, LightSail Program Manager and Planetary Society Chief Scientist had this to say about the mission. 
we're thrilled to announce mission success for LightSail 2. Our criteria was to demonstrate controlled solar sailing in a CubeSat by changing the spacecraft's orbit using only the light pressure of the sun, something that's never been done before. I'm enormously proud of this team. It's been a long road and we did it. For those who aren't aware, Bill Knight is the CEO of the Planetary Society, and he said this mission is a game changer. He said the following, For the Planetary Society, this moment has been decades in the making. Carl Sagan talked about solar sailing when I was in his class in 1977, but the idea goes back to at least 1607, when Johannes Kepler noticed that comet tails must be created by energy from the sun. The Light Sail 2 mission is a game changer for spaceflight and advancing space exploration. The crowdfunded mission received donations from an incredible 50,000 people across the world. It does seem that people are interested in space travel now more than ever. So what do you guys make of these incredible photographs? Let me know your thoughts in the comments.